Hey guys, my name is Matt with BZB Gear. I'm one of the videographers here, and today we're going to be talking about a technology that is going to be very key with one of our biggest launches uh, coming up here. And so with the launch of our Adamo camera around the corner, we wanted to take the time to talk about a major feature set of that camera, and that is NDI, specifically NDI HX3. Over the years, the most common way of using a camera is just simply to have it plugged in and uh, running cables like SDI or USB to the video production center. Whether that's a simple desktop computer or a switcher, this method is great, but it ends up with one big drawback, and that's going to be the cable itself. Cables are reliable, they're straightforward and robust, but they also take up space and have their own shortcomings like long cable runs becoming extremely expensive or unreliable. And so over the last decade, one aspect of our lives that has been seeing rapid development and expansion in capabilities is going to be networking and the internet. As we continue to shift more uh, things to the digital marketplace and as files become larger and larger, networks and IP providers have expanded their capabilities, but most importantly, they have had a larger focus on more bandwidth. This provided a very unique opportunity for video specifically and this meant that the potential to tap into an existing infrastructure to run video signals and other production aspects uh, kind of quickly became a reality. Most of the time, however, there are going to be two problems commonly encountered when video signals start being sent through the network. The first is going to be bandwidth, and the second is going to be latency. Despite the leaps that most networks have taken over the last decade or so, there are still a lot of networks that don't have enough room in the pipeline to support the large files reliably. Which brings us to 2015 and NewTek. In 2015, NewTek showed off Network Device Interface, also known as NDI, to the world at the IBC Broadcast Exhibition in Amsterdam. But what made NDI so special? Uh, well, that's going to be quite a few things. Uh, for one, NDI is not just simply a codec. It boasts a whole plethora of extras like control over IP, automatic device discovery, tools to convert NDI cameras into web cameras to be recognized by software like Zoom, uh, and a whole bunch of other advancements. Over the years, NDI has grown to be quite the juggernaut in terms of functionality and raw video quality uh, for controlling and producing broadcasts over the network and they haven't been showing any signs of stopping anytime soon as they've continued to release great updates to their NDI software, with the most recent being NDI 5. Uh, NDI 5 has a whole a bunch of awesome features like NDI Bridge, which theoretically will allow you to basically run a video uh, production from, say, Florida uh, when you're based out of California. It's really cool stuff. There is, however, one small problem with full bandwidth NDI. And that's while being incredibly lucrative due to its fantastic image quality and low latency, it does require quite the network and bandwidth. In order to get all the metadata and the low about 100 milliseconds latency or under, you're looking at needing to uh, give or take up to 160 megabytes per second for 1080p footage and something along the lines of a 10 gigabit network. So that will bring us to NDI HX. NewTek understood that while delivery and control of video over a network is extremely beneficial, not every application can support that kind of a network, and so they went to the drawing board to produce another NDI-based protocol parameter that could be more flexible. That's where NDI HX was developed around the H.264 compression format for video. This helped to keep the packet size a lot smaller while maintaining a lot of the benefits of NDI. This also meant that NDI cameras had a much cheaper buy-in option as well, as full bandwidth NDI cameras are also quite expensive, and that's not even including the infrastructure needed to support them first. However, the first iteration of, of NDI HX suffered greatly in terms of video quality and latency compared to full bandwidth, which brings us to NDI HX2. With HX2, the bandwidth was bumped up significantly to about 15 megabits per second, and support for H.265 was also added. While this was a great advance in technology and stream quality, some of those problems still persisted. It was a good image quality, but it still noticeably lacked uh, when compared to full bandwidth, and most importantly, the latency was still very noticeable. So, I uh, recently had the opportunity to speak to some of the great guys at the uh, VizRT group to help get some information on NDI and NDI HX3, and they really made it clear that NDI HX3's main goal was to move NDI HX into uh, 
basically to move it from more of a consumer thing to a premium experience. So they not only wanted to improve the quality of the video from the camera over the network, but also the usability. To that end, latency was a huge focus. Uh, NDI HX3 takes about 65 to 80 megabits per second, and for good reason. One of the most important aspects of NDI HX3 is the way that it implements a group of pictures, also known as GOP technology. Essentially, a GOP is a group of keyframes and inner frames. Uh, the keyframe would contain the complete information of the picture, while the inner frames are going to contain the data on the changes of the picture. Uh, essentially, the more keyframes in a GOP, the higher quality the image and less latency, but the more bandwidth you would need in order to support that. And the more inner frames you have, the more latency you'll have, but the trade-off is it's a less uh, stringent bandwidth requirement. So how does HX3 address the GOP question? Uh, well, when I had the pleasure to speak to Roberto, they made it clear uh, that being flexible is the key here. Essentially, they give you the power to choose whether you want to set the GOP to one, or if you'd like to go up to say six. This will allow for extra choices and flexibility, depending on if you have a, a network that can handle a higher bit rate, or if the application maybe doesn't need to use a higher bit rate. One important thing to note here is that at the same bit rate, GOP6 can be better than GOP1 in terms of compression artifacts, uh, but that's really going to depend on your bandwidth and how much you can fit through your network. Uh, we could go on for a while about how GOP works itself and what nuances there are to it, uh, but that's kind of getting away from the topic at hand. So let's go ahead and get back into how the video itself looks from NDI HX3. The quality of NDI HX3 is fantastic. It has very minimal compression artifacts and thanks to the flexibility with GOP, the latency is fantastic. So HX3 is poised as something to offer a premium alternative to full bandwidth that NDI would be proud to stamp their name on. In fact, that's exactly what they're doing. In order for a camera to support NDI HX3, the camera actually needs to be submitted to NDI so that their engineers can test it, confirm that it's up to spec, and can adequately handle the requirements for NDI HX3. And then they would certify it as an NDI HX3 product. Since I've been hammering on the latency of uh, HX3, let me put into perspective one of the key requirements of a camera to be certified by NDI as HX3. An NDI HX3 camera must have a latency of less than 100 milliseconds. That is less than a tenth of a second. That's very, very fast, and that's a really good thing. So let's just quickly recap what NDI HX3 really is. Um, uh, when it's up against NDI HX2, HX2 is going to be more of kind of your uh, consumer grade product. That's not to say it's a bad product, but it's going to be lacking uh, a lot of those extra features, especially the um, tunability that you're going to have with NDI HX3, as well as the increased bandwidth ceiling that you get with NDI HX3. So what NDI HX3 really is, is it's a uh, product that NDI themselves is getting behind, putting their full brand support behind, and it is essentially a prosumer uh, professional use camera. Um, so let's, since we've really it's talked about everything that NDI HX3 is and how it compares to the previous versions of NDI, specifically NDI HX2 and full bandwidth NDI. Let's quickly take a second to clear up some of the things that NDI HX3 is not after going over what it is. Due to the fact that NDI themselves have to confirm that the components of a camera are up to snuff to support the demands of NDI HX3, one thing that can't happen is upgrading an NDI HX two camera to an NDI HX3 camera. NDI HX3 cameras are purpose built to support the demands of NDI HX3. And on a similar vein, NDI HX3 does not refer to 4K streaming. NDI was very clear that all of their protocols of NDI are really based in 1080p video. Uh, and on the flip side of that, that's not to say that an NDI HX3 camera offering 4K couldn't happen, but to date, no one has tried, and I suspect the reason for that is because you'd really need more bandwidth than NDI full bandwidth. You'd need somewhere in the ballpark of over 180 megabits per second. So that wraps it up for this look at NDI, the history of it, uh, what different versions there are, 
And we really hope you guys learned something from it. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave some in the comment section. Uh, we would love to get back to you and try and help you out uh, figuring out whatever the answer is to that question. Uh, you can also talk to a lot of the guys over at uh, New Tech, uh, NDI, or the VizRT group. I know all of those people are fairly knowledgeable on the subject. And uh, as we found out when we were over there at uh, NAB, they are more than happy to answer questions. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time.